The second law of thermodynamics is a fundamental law of nature, unarguably one of the most valuable discoveries of mankind. However, this law is slightly confusing for most engineers or students. The main reason for this is because it has so many complex terms in it and that there are many ways that this second law can be stated, but most importantly, the majority do not understand what are the applications of this law. In this video, we will create a real physical insight into this law with a minimum use of mathematics. The million dollar question is for what purpose is this law used? One of the main uses of the second law of thermodynamics is to determine whether a process is spontaneous or not. Let's consider a few examples. Here two gases are mixing together. Air is being leaked from a balloon and the mass is falling down and the hot tea is losing its heat. You can see that the process of moving from state 1 to state 2 will happen spontaneously, which means without any external aid. But what about the opposite process? Will that happen spontaneously? Would this mixed gas become unmixed spontaneously without any external aid? From your own experience, you know this will not happen, so this process is not spontaneous. However, according to the rules of energy conservation, or the first law of thermodynamics, even the reverse process is possible, because in both states, the energy is the same. So what is missing here? There must be one more law, which governs the direction of a process, and that law is second law of thermodynamics. Now, probably you have a question in your mind, do I really require a law just to predict the direction of a process? I can predict the direction of all these processes from my intuition. If you do have such questions in your mind, let us analyze one more example. This is a chemical reaction. Here, I am putting two chemicals together in a chamber and I am waiting for a reaction to happen. I want to check whether two blue atoms react with one yellow atom to form a new molecule. Do you have an answer for this? This cannot be predicted from intuition. This is exactly what the second law is used for. In this video, we will review the second law. We will learn it well, and we will come back to the same problem to this chemical reaction. Here are the two standard definitions of the second law. You may have already heard of them. Both these statements mean the same, but they are not in a state directly useful to engineers. Here is a useful form of the second law that is useful for engineers. The Clausius inequality. This is a small integral equation, but with deep inner meanings. Please don't get irritated by this equation. We will conduct a physical experiment to understand it. The Clausius inequality means that if you take a cyclic process, such as in a refrigerator, and add all the heat interaction happening at the boundary, divided by the temperature at the boundary, the resulting value will be less than or equal to zero. This is an interesting equality which is true of all cyclic processes. To make this equation more application-oriented, let us introduce a new term, the famous term of entropy. Entropy has two parts, one to represent disorder and another to describe the heat transfer effect. Here is a common myth buster. Entropy is not only disorder, but it has one more part within it, that of heat transfer. In short, Entropy change of a process can be defined as the sum of change in entropy production and entropy transfer. For a perfectly reversible process, where the process has no friction in mixing, the entropy production becomes zero. If you use this definition of entropy in the Clausius inequality, we can prove mathematically that, during a spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe always increases. This is known as the increase in entropy principle. This is a very useful form of the second law. Now let's take a practical case to understand this principle better. Consider this hot tea problem. We want to find out whether the hot tea will absorb or release heat. The tea is the system and everything except the tea is the surroundings. Assume the tea is absorbing heat, a heat of 10 J. So entropy change of hot tea is 10 divided by temperature of the hot tea. The same heat amount is lost by the surroundings. So the entropy change of the surroundings is minus 10 divided by the temperature of surroundings. If you add these two quantities, you will get the entropy change of the universe. It's a negative quantity in this case. This is impossible due to the second law. Now, assume the hot tea is losing heat. So Q will be minus 10 in this case. 
you can see that the entropy change of the universe is positive here, and this is possible. So using the second law of thermodynamics, we have proved that the hot tea can only release heat and it cannot absorb heat. Now let's get back to the chemical reaction problem. Assume the reaction has happened and the system's entropy has increased by delta S and it has absorbed some heat. We call it enthalpy. What we have to calculate is the entropy change of the universe. We already have the entropy change of the system here. What will be the value of the entropy change of the surroundings? Here is a small clue for that. If the system has absorbed some amount of heat, the surroundings have lost the same amount of heat. So the entropy change of the surroundings is negative delta H divided by T. Thus, you can easily represent the entropy change of the universe as this. If this quantity is greater than zero, then this reaction is feasible. Now, let's have a rearrangement of this equation. Since the temperature T is always positive, if I multiply by minus T, the inequality equation will become like this. When this term is less than or equal to zero, this process is possible. We call this new term Gibbs free energy, or in simple words, the change of Gibbs free energy of the system is less than or equal to zero, then that process is possible. This is the advantage of using Gibbs free energy. Unlike the increase in entropy principle, you need not to worry about what is happening in the surroundings. You can concentrate your study only on the system. This way, you can predict whether a process will be spontaneous or not. We hope from this video you have developed good insight into the second law of thermodynamics. Thank you for watching the video.